Welcome to Entertainment Tech. I'm Caroline Cleary. And I'm Campbell Brady. We have the latest for you in celebrity gossip, fashion styles, and upcoming events. Stay tuned. Welcome to Celeb Chat Segment. I'm Micah Osberry. Looks like problems for E's fashion police keep coming. This time they are left looking for a new cast member. Kelly Osborne announced her departure from the show this week. The news comes after her co-star, Juliana Rancic, made controversial comments about Zendaya's dreadlocks from the Golden Globes. A few days after Rancic publicly apologized, Osborne announced she would be leaving. A source says that the comments about Zendaya were rehearsed during three different takes, and the first two times Kelly said, guys, we can't say this. Zendaya is a friend of the show. Khloe Kardashian, Nene Leakes, and Kristen Cavallari are all names that have been thrown out as possible replacements for Osborne. No casting decision has been made at this point. In celebrity baby news, American Idol and country superstar Carrie Underwood just welcomed her first child with her hockey player husband Mike Fisher last week. On Tuesday, she announced the birth of the boy on her Twitter account. She tweeted, tiny hands and tiny feet. God has blessed us with an amazing gift. Isaiah Michael Fisher, born February 27th. With the tweet, she also posted a picture of baby Isaiah with her husband. The two haven't revealed what led them to settle on the name Isaiah, but a few weeks before she gave birth, she told people that, we don't have a baby name. We need to look, lock that down pretty soon. The new parents met back in 2008 and got engaged the next year. They married in July 2010 in Greensboro, Georgia. Television mogul and icon Oprah Winfrey has become somewhat of a staple to the city of Chicago over the years, but she won't be for much longer. Her production company, Harpo Studios, was originally based in the Windy City, but now is making the transition to offices in West Hollywood full time. She told Hollywood Reporter that she will miss Chicago as it has been the setting for her television shows. She says, Chicago has been everything for me. I've spent more hours in this building than I have any other building on earth. We were here when there was nothing but hoes and rats on the street, and now it's one of the hottest neighborhoods. Her television network, OWN, is stopping production in the Chicago studios on Tuesday, as Oprah moves on to another chapter in her life. Stay tuned for Fashion Styles after the break. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right so every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> My name is Namdi Asamoa. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Give up on sex? Don't give up on birth control either. There are more methods than you think. Find yours at bedsider.org. Welcome back to Celeb Chat. I'm Campbell Brady. And I'm Caroline Cleary with your latest fashion styles. A trend spotted on the red carpet in the past couple of days is black jumpsuits. Now this trend has been circulating for a while now, but two stars wore it particularly well. First up is Kim Kardashian. She was spotted in a knit long sleeved Julian MacDonald jumpsuit. The holes in the knitting made the piece very sexy and trendy. She added a simple black choker around her neck. This is a trend that I see starting back up again. Kim always keeps in touch with her fashion senses. Next up is Leah Michelle wearing Mason. This piece was solid black with a very deep V and sleeveless. She has the perfect body to rock this look. She paired this with a red pointed heel and her hair straight down. She could have used a little more accessorization, but overall she looked good. 
The man bun is a recent phenomenon loved by women around the world. Ever since Justin Bieber's flow, men's hair has continued to grow and grow. In the past year, females across the universe have gravitated towards one man's luscious locks, and that man is Jared Leto. Not only is his hair long and shiny, but he also mastered the most perfect ombre of all time. Unfortunately, I am super sad and very sorry to report that Leto has chopped off all his hair, sending many into hysteria. He has just begun filming for The Suicide Squad, and his locks were a no-go for his role as the Joker. Director of the film David Ayer teased fans with an Instagram post of someone holding scissors to Leto's ponytail, with the caption, should we? Leto then confirmed the chop by posting his own Instagram of his new shaven head with the caption, hashtag gone. In my personal opinion, this seems to be the most dramatic haircut of all time. No one died, people. Hollywood lost a beautiful head of hair, but at least we still have Leto. Now for some print style. Jennifer Lawrence recently did a campaign for Dior. We really miss seeing Miss Beauty at the Oscars, so the timing of this ad was perfect. Don't get me wrong, I, I'm a big Jennifer Lawrence fan, but I never really thought she was the most gorgeous actress out there. This ad, though, has me second guessing that. She looked absolutely stunning as she posed in a series of sleek dresses. The photos were shot by photographer Paolo Roversi. Jennifer's skin is actually glowing in these images. I've never seen her look more beautiful. If you have yet to see Madonna's epic fall at the Brit Awards last week, you are missing out. While it was as hilarious to watch as it was painful, Madonna is not too pleased. While performing her newest song, Living for Love, Madonna was essentially dragged by her cape off a stage. You can see in the video that Madonna is clearly struggling to untie her cape while singing. The cue comes and her dancers, unaware of the cape's attachment to her body, go to pull it off, but bring her with it. Like a champ, she gets right back up and continues performing, but the sound of her falling will never escape viewers' ears. When talking to people, Madonna explains the incident saying, so here I am marching in like a queen and I got to the top of the stairs and I pulled my silky string and it would not come undone. And my two lovely Japanese dancers basically strangled me off the stage. I had a choice. I could either be strangled or fall with the cape and I fell. However, after hearing this statement, designer of the cape, Giorgio Armani, had a different story. He recently sat down with the Associated Press and blasted Madonna saying, as we know, Madonna is very difficult. This cape had a hook and she wanted a tie, and she wasn't able to open it with her hands. That's all there is to it. Many were surprised by his blunt response as he and Madonna have a long-standing and professional relationship. I guess there really is more to the story and possibly more to Ad Madonna's ego than we thought. Who wore it better was a close race this time around. Rita Ora and Kim Kardashian both wore in a Tusco Kudo dress. The dress is pale pink leather and almost nude, and very form-fitting. Now the, dress they wore, the dresses they wore were slightly different because Rita's had straps at the top that led to a choker on the collar, and Kim's was just plain at the top. They both wore a nude heel and simple hair. Kim accessorized with a cream fur jacket. Unfortunately, I think Rita stole the show. This dress flattered Rita's figure much more than it did Kim's. Also, the choker made Rita look slightly sexier. They both killed it, Rita just brought her A-game. Sometimes I wake up for class and don't have the energy to get dressed and look pretty. I realize half of our campus feels this way and therefore it really doesn't matter. On the other hand, I do not understand when celebrities show up to events looking like a crazy person dressed them or they went colorblind. This week, Rita Ora looks like she has dressed for the circus, but in fact she is dressed for a party celebrating Nylon Spring fashion issue. This look is absolutely insane. I have a burning hatred for Bermuda shorts and the fact that they are part of a tuxedo two-piece makes me want to crawl out of my skin. With a mix of fishnet stockings, wedge sneakers, and leather gloves, Aura is adding too much to an already hideous look. Next up is Busy Phillips, who looks like she, one, either stepped out of the early 2000s, or two, just finished dropping her kids off at, day at daycare, possibly even both. While attending the LA premiere of Cinderella, Phillips donned a navy tunic, navy leggings, and black boots. She also wore minimal makeup and sported a very messy top knot. Now, while she doesn't look horrible, she dressed com completely wrong for the venue. The star of the movie, Lily James, showed up in a fully crystallized gown, while Busy was literally in leggings. I've always wondered if it was worse to come to a party overdressed or underdressed, and after this mishap, I'm definitely going with the latter. Switching things up a little bit from the red carpet looks, now we have a hot new commodity in Hollywood. This ring is the new style. It is blinged out, crisscross, and called the EXO ring. It has been seen in the hands of many celebrities such as Candace Swanpool, Cameron Diaz, Lucy Hale, Jessica Alba, and many more. The ring costs around $6,000 and has been worn on the red carpet, at events, and even just out while running simple errands. Luckily, there's a knockoff for this ring, which costs around $50 on Joyous.com. 
It is made out of Swar Swarovski crystals. Be sure to get your bling ring today and be a part of the latest trend. Carl Lagerfeld recently sat down with the New York Times to discuss his career. Lagerfeld is celebrating 50 years as Fendi's creative director and 30 years designing for Chanel. He announced that he will be adding a couture fur show for Fendi's fur-loving fans during the Paris Couture Collection in July. When discussing people's distaste for fur clothing, he responded saying, For me, as long as people eat meat and wear leather, I don't get the message. It's very easy to say no fur, no fur, no fur, but it's an industry. Who will pay for all the unemployment of people if you suppress the industry of the fur? Lagerfeld was also asked about his opinion on selfies. The famous designer explained, I don't do selfies, but other people do, and they all want to do selfies with me. No, no, no. Thank God Sebastian, my assistant. He's mean to the people in the street, mean and rude. I'm a nice person. They also discuss Lagerfeld's very famous cat, Chopet, and how he hopes he becomes famous so he can just hide behind him. If you wish to hear more about the well-known designer, go to NewYorkTimes.com. The Jared Leto story that I talked about before, isn't that the craziest thing? Yeah, I don't know why everyone's making such a big deal about it. Everyone's it's crazy. freaking out. I No one will stop talking about it. I mean, his hair was gorgeous, but yeah. still, I, so, no one will stop talking about it. Shouldn't that much. Right? It's like on every news outlet. It's the yeah. weirdest thing. Well, that's it for the Celeb Chat segment. Stay tuned for upcoming events. So good to see you guys. So, what's up? Oh, we finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Mm -hmm. Jeez, at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... Mm -hmm. Is it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play more. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. This week we're going to learn how to do a red lip. So there's a couple of things that you need in order to accomplish this look. So first, this isn't necessary, but I like to do it just so you get like a nice finish. And it's a lip scrub. And mine's by Sarah Happ. But I know a bunch of different places make them. So you can really get whatever one you want. And then just a red lipstick. Mine is CoverGirl. It's 305 Hot Passion. It's so red. So I love this one, and it's super cheap, so that's always a plus. And then I just got a red lip liner, mine's NYX, and you can, once again, get whatever one you want. And then I don't always use this, but I'm going to try it out today because I think it can really help, especially with people that haven't done this a lot. It's a lip brush, and it's just easier to apply it um, and get a cleaner line if you use a brush, so we're going to use that today, too. So first, all you have to do is take the lip scrub, and I've had this for like a lot of years, and I don't think it goes, it expires or anything, so you can just keep using it whenever you want. You really don't need a lot, just a little bit. You can see, put some on my finger, and all you're going to do is just scrub it on your lips, and it is just exfoliating them, so it's not going to be like chapped and stuff like that, especially when you're using matte lipsticks, you don't want your lips to be chapped because it shows up very clear. So just scrub it on. It looks kind of gross, but you can just wipe it off after. So wipe that off. And you're all good. And then you just want to make sure 
that you get all the little exfoliants off. Now your lips are just not trapped anymore. So first you're going to start with the liner. <clears throat> And you want to make sure it's sharp because if it's dull, it's going to be harder to get a cleaner line. So you're just going to line your lips. And there's really no problem. This takes some practice. No problem with overlining. You just want to make sure you don't do it too much. Um, and just go slow. That's my one tip, especially if you're a beginner. So I have the mirror again behind the camera, so I'm just going to do this. So... Just follow the natural line. And then I'm going to go up top. And you can just fill in. Obviously, you see this side's a little bit bigger. So just make it even. And then you see the line is all the way around. And just clean it up with your finger. And then what I like to do, you also want to make sure you always get in the corners. Um, what I like to do is just cover my whole lip with the liner because it just adds another shade and it makes the lip gloss last longer. It's kind of like a backup. And then you're gonna take the lip gloss and just apply it. And I always start on my bottom lip, center to corner. Now, we're going to use the brush. <clears throat> so mine's just retractable, it just goes in and out. So just take a little bit of the lipstick on the brush. And then you can just clean up the lines. Super easy, super fun, and it just adds some color. I'm wearing like all black today, so I like to do a red lip when I'm wearing black because it just brightens up your look. And it's that easy, that simple, and you're all set. And then you can add gloss if you want. I tend to like it matte more. I also hate when my hair gets stuck to my lip gloss. That's just me. Um, and that's it. Super simple, super easy. Just a fun little addition. Hope you guys like it. Don't worry. The 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play more. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. I got a pizza for a Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today, I'm just an aluminum can, but one day, I could be a stadium. Hello, I'm Madeline Fowler. And I'm Alexis Walsh with upcoming events. On Friday, March 6th from 5 to 10 p.m., Saturday, March 7th from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday, March 8th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., the 35th annual MDA Car Show will be held at the Berglund Center in Roanoke. 
The MDA Car Show is a nonprofit organization that devotes its time to putting on a quality car show in order to donate profits to the Muscular Dystrophy Association. In 1981, a group of car enthusiasts came together with the hope of putting on a quality car show, and these car enthusiasts became the Roanoke Valley Charity Car Show Committee. They decided that the money from the show would go to the Muscular Dystrophy Association and help children and families in Roanoke and the surrounding area. This event is not only one of the greatest car shows in the area, it helps raise money and awareness for muscular dystrophy. If you are in the area this coming weekend, don't miss out on this great opportunity to see a quality car show and help out a great cause. Have you ever been to a car show before? I haven't. I've seen it on TV a few times, but I think that's not really the same thing. So yeah, no, I haven't either, but it sounds interesting. It does sound interesting, yeah. On Wednesday, March 18th, Sigma Psi Zeta will be sponsoring the Purple Ribbon Banquet event. This event is a semi-formal event hosted to raise awareness of domestic violence. The event will feature Pat Brown, the director of the Women's Resource Center. The event will take place in Owens Banquet Hall at 6.30. Seating is open and tickets are $15. Join Sigma Psi Zeta and learn what the Blacksburg community can do to prevent domestic violence. There will be great food catered by Personal Touch as well as a raffle prizes. Please do not forget to keep in mind the semi-formal attire of purple and black. Hope to see you there. Are you going? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a great cause, and it's something that the colleges can definitely benefit from. That sounds really good, yeah. Winter Jam Tour Spectacular is an annual music tour featuring Christian rock bands, Christian rap, contemporary Christian music bands, comedy acts, and a motivational speaker. This event is the largest annual Christian music tour in the United States, and we are lucky enough to have Winter Jam at the Berglund Center Coliseum in Roanoke. The event will take place on Thursday, March 12th at 7 p.m. Skillet, a Christian rock band who has sold over 2 million albums in the United States, will be performing at Thursday night's show. The band is Grammy nominated and platinum selling. Many other award winning artists will also be performing at this year's Winter Jam. With events in cities such as Fort Worth, Texas and Chicago, Illinois, we are extremely lucky to have the Winter Jam so close to us. Don't miss out on this oper awesome opportunity to worship and connect through some fabulous music. That sounds awesome. I've actually been to a tour sort of like that. I'm not sure if it was the Winter Jam, but it was so awesome. Yeah, so I think, I think it sounds be, really yeah, good. Yeah, definitely. Well, we all know Mondays are tough, but how about making them less dreadful by attending Tech's very own Music Mondays? Every Monday, the Moss Center for the Arts hosts a new performers to provide students with something different than what they're used to. The next performer will be Frank Paviz, performing on the piano March 16th. The show will take place in the Squires Recital Salon. Admission is $5 of the Virginia Tech ID. Bring your friends for a fun time. Can't make this Monday? Don't worry, there's always the next. After forming in Houston, Texas in 1969, becoming a huge international touring act in the 70s, and becoming one of MTV's greatest hits in the 80s, ZZ Top sold tens of millions of records. ZZ Top is a band that has a unique mix of hard rock and dirty blues with a twist of new sounds and technology. In 2004, the band was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Most people from the 70s and 80s appreciate and love ZZ Top, and I'm sure those of you that do will be very excited to hear that ZZ Top will be performing at the Roanoke Performing Arts Theater. The concert will take place on Wednesday, March 25th at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are on sale for $69.50 and $79.50. If you are a ZZ Top fan, don't miss this opportunity to take a trip back to, take a trip back to the 80s and experience ZZ Top live. Say that like 10 times fast. ZZ Top. <laughs> My mom listens to them all the time. We're originally from Texas, so that's where they started, so I think that's probably why. Oh, wow, definitely. On Friday, March 20th, Overton Step Show will be performing for Virginia Tech at Burris Hall. Ticket presales begin Friday, February 20th for only $10. At the door, tickets will be $15 for walk-ins and $10 for Greek-affiliated students and alumni. Come see NPHC organizations compete for a cash prize and trophy. You will not want to miss this. Last year, the show sold out fast, so you got to get your tickets now. The event is highly respected and appreciated by the Virginia Tech community, so we hope to see you there. Have you ever been to a step show before? No, I never have. I have. My high school and middle school had a step team, so I went oh, to them wow. then, so it was really cool. Yeah, that's interesting. We didn't have one, so that's cool. <laughs> Coming up next, the on-screen scoop. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. Help. I made it. 
Hey, Mom. I got the job. I've got the job. Welcome aboard. I've got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Donate to Goodwill. Help provide job training in your community. No more pencils. No more books. No more teachers. Dirty looks. School's out for summer. What this place needed was better graduation rates. So we worked with schools like Henry Ford High, and now they're up 18%. To help us do more good this year, go to unitedway.org because great things happen when we live united. We're back with On Screen Scoop. I'm Sarah Mulrain. The Netflix original series Orange is the New Black has come out with its season three premiere date this week and I personally could not be more excited. The series captures the life of Piper Chapman, played by Taylor Schilling, who is sentenced to 15 months in prison due to her past involvement with transporting drug money for an ex-girlfriend. Season 1 highlighted the struggles Piper faced in getting accustomed to prison life while living in tight quarters with her ex-girlfriend, Alex Voss, played by Laura Propin. Season 2 was just as exciting and was able to show a more in-depth storyline because the audience had already fallen in love with characters such as Crazy Eyes and Pensatucky. Season 2 introduced new characters, creating new friendships, enemies, and storylines. I can only imagine what the writers have in store for us in the new season. It is scheduled to come out to Netflix on June 12th. House of Cards released their third season this past week, and viewers are reporting mixed reviews. The series is an adaptation of the BBC miniseries by the same name. House of Cards is set in the Washington, D.C. area and tells the story of Frank Underwood, played by Kevin Spacey. Underwood is a Democratic congressman from South Carolina and the House Majority Whip. In season one, Underwood is not given his promised appointment as Secretary of State, and the rest of the series is dedicated to him getting revenge on the politicians who betrayed him. The series also stars Robin White as Claire Underwood, the wife of Frank. Reviews of season three highlight the excellent acting from Robin White and Kevin Spacey, saying they give the audience more reasons to watch the series every episode. Overall, season three has gotten positive reviews, and with such a brilliant actor as Kevin Spacey, I see no reason to pass up on another thrilling series. One of my favorite TV shows aired their 14th season premiere this past Tuesday. Hell's Kitchen is the cooking competition show hosted by the superstar chef Gordon Ramsay. The contestants compete for a position at one of Ramsay's well-known restaurants such as Gordon Ramsay's Pub and Grill in Las Vegas. Ramsay is known for his sometimes uncontrollable temper and passion for good food and fine dining. The chefs go through numerous painstaking challenges in hopes of winning the show and reserving a spot working for Chef Ramsay and Ramsay. In the past, the series has kept audiences excited and enthralled by the cooking ability of the contestants and the rage they face from Chef Ramsay. The dinner services are never dull, and I cannot wait to see what this season has in store. That's it for Entertainment Tech. We'll see you next week.